If it was up to me, I would not teach children to daven when they were five, but I would wait till they were 20. You start to teach them when they're five, and then they continue to daven like a five-year-old, even when they are 40 or 50 years old. But what would be if we waited till they're 20? Most people would not start to daven. These are the words that my Rabbi Shiva of Leib Baxitzal shared with us, and as he related that he heard from a mashkiach that had been visiting Mir when the Rashiva himself was just a young boy. When I first heard these words, I thought it meant we need to focus more on kavana. We need to learn to be able to not do it by habit, but we need to be able to understand the meaning of the words and to help be able to focus for longer periods of time. Over these past number of years, as we've gone through multiple challenges, and I am now myself over 50 years old, I have begun to realize that there's much more. And I hope to continue to realize there's even more than I know currently. I would like to share with you over these next couple of videos three insights how we need to look at davening differently, and hopefully they will give you the ability to look at davening in a better way as yourselves. The first way is recognizing that chakras really is a process. When I would speak to students and they would tell me that chakras is just an hour long of praise, 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 Shabbat Shalom is praising, Shabbat is praising, Shabbat is just asking, and all it is is a lot of repetition, is, is obviously a very young perception of what davening is. But really davening is a process. And this process is something that has helped me and it has enabled me to prepare myself for every day to start off with the shachris is, is what has given me the kayach to be able to do that. So let's go very quickly the outline of what the shachris is, and I hope that you will find it helpful. This process can be similarly depicted as the dream that Yaakov Avinu had when he saw the Sula of Arta, he saw a ladder that its feet were reaching towards the ground, but its top reached the heavens. And he saw angels that were going up and coming down. The process of tefillah is also to be able to start from the bottom, work our way up towards the heavens, and then when we've accomplished our goal, we are able to take our new awareness and bring it back down into our world. I will be pausing periodically throughout this video to be able to supply this additional visualization that I hope will help you understand the concept I'm trying to share. The first one is you start off with brachas, and brachas is being able to see Hashem in our lives. I can see, I can stand on the ground, I can get out of bed, I have clothes to wear. I expounded upon this in a previous video that I will include the link below in the comments. and. You can look there for further description. But seeing Hashem in my life, very, very personal, just being grateful for Hashem, what He's done for us. Then we go into Karbonus, which is to recognize that I have an ego and I have desires and I have animalistic tendencies, and those need to be nekrav on a mizbeach and removed to whatever extent possible. So they do not cloud my perception, so that when I go into Pesuki de Zimra, I'm able to see Hashem in the world. And realizing that nature is not a default, but nature is Hashem's hand in everything that happens. That allows me then to go into Birchus Krishma, which is to realize that if you look at nature or look at our lives over an expanse of time, you realize that Hashem Sashkocha Pratis is so precise. And that that's what the angels are able to see from their vantage point, not being limited by time and space as we are. And then, in fact, they're the lower level angels that struggle to see Hashem. And that they need to look into our world and they see how Hashem interacts with us and orchestrates our lives. And they're able to come to a recognition and a greater clarity of Hashem's Hashkoch HaPratis and say, Baruch Kivayid Hashem Imikrimoy. As they look at us as we struggle, we, we go through our days and we still say, Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekeinu Hashem Echad. We are their inspiration. 
seeing Hashem in our lives gives them greater clarity than they have in Shemayim. And that certainly prepares us for a completely different type of Shemayim where we're not just asking for things, but rather we have our needs which we express and then we give back to Hashem and we surrender to Hashem's will and recognize that He is only doing what's best for us. Then when we walk away from that, it will be natural to say, Tachanun, because we're no longer where we were before davening. And we realize that we may have done things that we would have preferred we didn't. Or we may realize that as we daven to Hashem, we may have expressed it in a way that's really out of bounds. Even though Hashem wants it and obviously sets it up that way. But we can recognize how remarkable that system that Hashem has set up for it really is to be able to then say we're sorry if we said anything wrong. And then we continue to back away and we come back into our lives and we say Ashrei and Uvalzirin and Aleinu and all of those other elements and we are able to bring Hashem into our lives. Prepare us for the day. Help us be ready to overcome any challenges that Hashem may give us. This process has been very supportive for me, has been, has been helped me process and, and deal with difficulties, perhaps better than any therapist or, or meditation session could do. Davening is so much greater than that. I hope that you have appreciated this insight, this perception, and I hope to share with you future insights in future videos. But davening is certainly much greater than we have ever imagined it when we were 5 or 20 or 30. Next week I look forward to sharing with you a different insight and one that I also hope that you will find beneficial.